people like to be challenged mm. emotionally and they and the readers are the same way if you tell them they can't read the wild guess what they're going to read it because they can so they do like to be challenged they you know i've had people you know cuz a lot of people say well people with any kind of triggers or bad history in their life can't read those types of books but i absolutely disagree because a huge 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 portion of my readers are people that have gone through terrible terrible things in their life and they don't want to read about the really super you know happy easy stories because that's not how their life was Welcome to the Author Like a Boss podcast, the podcast for indie authors who want to improve their writing, up-level their marketing, make money with their books, and have fun doing it. Now, on to the show with your host, Ella Barnard. Hello, everybody. Hello, bosses. We are here today with Kay Webster. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, Kay Webster is a USA Today bestselling author. Her titles have claimed many bestseller tags in numerous categories, are translated in multiple languages, and have been adapted into audiobooks. She lives in Tornado Alley with her husband, two children, and her baby dog named Blue. When she's not writing, she's reading, drinking copious amounts of coffee, and researching aliens. Welcome to the show, Kay. Hey, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It's ridiculous how excited I am. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but let's not talk let's let's like move on from my excitement and nervousness and let and allow you the space for your excitement and nervousness. <laughs> 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 Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your author journey? Um, sure. Um, I've always been a total book nerd ever since I was old, old enough to hold a book, so reading all the time. But you know, and it was always in the back of my head, like, I always wanted to write a book, but it just seemed, you know, on TV, they're, they've got their typewriters and their, you know, million sheets of paper, and they keep crumpling them up. And I thought, that just seems really daunting. But it wasn't until um, December of 2013 that a friend invited me to a book signing at Barnes & Noble. And so I went with her, and I got to hear some Abby Glines, uh, Jamie McGuire, I got to hear like their journeys and what they did. And then um, it kind of inspired me a little bit. And then I had my friend tell me that she was writing a book. And I thought, well, she's not a book nerd like me. Like she likes books, but she doesn't love books like me. And if she's writing a book, why can't I write a book? And so I started picking her brain about basically, how are you doing this? What are you doing? And by the time we got back home, I already had a story in my head and I opened my computer and I typed up that story. And 10 days later, I had a book and I never stopped six years later. And I'm still just writing like crazy because it's fun and I love it. So wow. 10 days later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like this huge long book, but it was, it was a story. I mean, it was a, it was my first book and yeah. I was really, really proud of it. And I actually didn't publish that one first. I ended up writing another one right after that and published that one first in February. But it just was, I you know, that. I never <laughs> I love that because I am like, I love books. Like I love <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I totally resonate with you there because yes. I really love books and reading and, but I've always been a little intimidated by writing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so yeah. I'm just now, like I've written a few nonfiction books, but I feel like that's not the same. Like that's not, that's not the same just because it's always, it's not what I always was dreaming of. Right. <laughs> like right, I wasn't right, like, oh, right. let me, what if I could write a nonfiction? I was never thinking that. So <laughs> emotionally, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but the, so I've just started writing some fiction stories, short stories. And oh, I'm cool. like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you got this. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Okay. Okay. So, so six years though, that's not that like, like I'm like 2013. This is cause I'm older. Right. I'm like, that's not that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same. <laughs> and then I know like some kids are like, I was a teenager in 2013. I'm not. Right, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> so how many books, like how many books do you have out now-ish? I am coming up on 100. <gasps> like, yeah. So it's, I, it, I would say by, I don't know, before summer hits, I should have 100 books published. Because I'll have, wow. yeah, within the next few months, I'll I'll have that. So, wow, 
yeah it's okay it's fun <laughs> okay are you uh are you um because i was chatting with my friend last night and i was like i am interviewing <laughs> i was like what would you ask her because <laughs> oh. she's been writing longer than i have and uh-huh. um she was she was like does she is she a pantser or a plotter and i was like i don't know so that's a good question <laughs> <laughs> With the, that level of speed, especially makes me curious. Like a hundred books, that's that especially makes me curious. Um, well, um, I've, I'm I would lean toward being a um, pantser. Mm-hmm. Like I have a very loose story in my brain, and sometimes I jot down, you know, like maybe two paragraphs that kind of summarizes the whole book, and then I just start writing. And I, I feel like any time that I've tried to outline. And, and plot like really heavy duty, I get stumped and stuck because I feel forced into that, that, that thing that I said I was going to do. And even though when I started writing the story, it's, it's evolved and turned into something else and I'm still trying to wedge it into this thing. And so if I don't make it so strict on myself, then I can just fly through and write whatever I want and just go whatever direction I want. So pants are definitely is more me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think, um, I'm I'm doing outlining pretty extensively right now, but at other times when I've tried I'm outlining very extensively, I'm writing short story romances. So I'm like outlining each chapter, each mm-hmm. of the seven chapters and mm-hmm. the whole of the 10,000 words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're writing more of an outline of the story. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I'm like, man, not that much of an outline. Like, it's like... <laughs> It's an extensive outline because the story is, the story is so short. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like really, it's just an idea. It's, but I like having the freedom because when I feel like I'm constrained, I don't have the. I'm like, but then I don't get a play. Then it's not as playful. I think. Right. Exactly. I feel the same way. Okay. Okay. So, um, but you do have a you do have like a general idea of like the the climax. Like you're like here's the setting. Right. Here's what's yeah the intention. I mean, like, I, Exactly. Like, like whenever I come up with a story, I basically have it inside my head, like, like a little movie. And I just, anytime I'm in the car, I'm thinking my movie over and over and over again. And I get to those climax points in my head and I'm seeing them talk them out and, um, the stuff they're going to say and all this stuff. And so that way, whenever I go back to write, I basically replay that scene in my head. So it's like, I guess it's kind of like outlining in my head, but I don't write it down. <laughs> yeah. I have another person who I interviewed who said that they like, they play it out in their heads. Mm-hmm. And yeah, anyways, that's very, okay. Thank you for sharing because <laughs> everybody wants to know like how other people do it. And I like to find out not because I think that's the way that everybody should be doing it, but uh-huh. because there's so many different ways. <laughs> yeah. <that's interesting>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many different ways. Okay. So this is now I'm going to ask, um, so some of your, I haven't read all of your stories because I didn't realize there was almost a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I didn't find you that long ago. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's going to take a while to catch up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I read a lot, but I also didn't realize there was almost a hundred and I found you like this year. So, oh, okay. but the ones that I have read are like not your typical romance topics. Are you okay talking about? I figure you are because I'm like, she has a picture, like not even like a, like right. a, yeah, yeah, yeah. an avatar, like a real picture of her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's me. I'm and I talk. I mean, every, every, I mean, I talk about all my books. I'm I'm proud of yeah. all, even the ones that get grief. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so um, what appeals to you? Like, what is the like? I don't, I don't. I'm not. There's no judgment here because I like your books. So, mm-hmm. what is it that you're like? Oh, I really want to write this story. Well, you know, I like to, okay, it all starts from, from reading. So first and foremost, I'm a reader. I love to read books, but I don't like reading the same thing over and over again. So, you know, before I ever picked up a romance book, I read horror and thrillers and suspense and just, you know, apocalyptic type stuff. So my, my, you know, basically what I'm built up of is darker themes. And so that was always like my love. Then I found love stories and I was like, wow, this is really amazing. And then it was like, I craved this blend of the two. And so, um, I started reading and there were books out there that blended both, you know, those, both of those themes that made me very happy. But then there was also like books that I kind of craved or liked that 
weren't out there. And so like with, um, the wild, I, I just, I hadn't read anything with those kinds of themes. And I, you know, and there was these characters that started forming in my, in my head. And I thought, well, I'm going to give them a story, you know, like there's nothing out there like that. So why don't I write it? You know, cause that's kind of how a lot of my, my books start out because I want to read it. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So it's, it's something I want to read, but it's not out there. So, and a lot of times with some of the taboo subjects, you get books out there that are just all the kinkiness, but no like emotion and the story love. and depth. Right. And so I wanted to like, bring those kind of stories that still had the 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 you know the heat and everything but it also had like this undying epic love that threaded it all together and made you just really root for them even though it's not something you would root for in everyday life yes yes i was telling my husband last night and he's like very conservative very <laughs> like like i'm very liberal and i'm, uh-huh. I'm like yeah anything Any, I'm, like, right. I'm like anything goes when you're reading it's it's a book right. and he's very uh-huh. so i was telling him about um i was i read this last weekend the first three war and peace books uh-huh and uh and I'm like, this is, and then this, and then this. And he's like, whoa. And I'm like, yeah, but the crazy. <laughs> he's like, that's twisted. And I'm like, yeah, but the crazy. And I'm like, but what makes it so good and why I'm geeking out so uh-huh. much is like, because it's a love story. Like, right. she makes you root for the characters, even when they're kind of evil. <laughs> right, right, right. Because like, my, my motto is villains need love too. Yeah, yeah. And and that's why that's why I'm geeking, geeking out because I'm like, even when you shouldn't, you still want them to have a happy ever after. Right. It's, and yes. she does it like with this really like it's a romance. It's not. It's a romance still. Right, right. <laughs> so that's why I'm geeking out. And I love that. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's so fun. Um, mm-hmm. What? Now, my next question is, though. Because one of the things I was like, how does she deal with this? Like, because a lot of writers are very creative and very sensitive. So uh-huh. I'm going to shift to the kind of emotional and mental side. Sure. Like what, when you have a negative response, which you have on some people, like what, uh-huh. how do you, I guess, is how you deal with it now different than how when you first dealt with it? Or like, can you tell us a little bit about that? You know, whenever I first started out and I wrote a lot of contemporary romance because that's what whenever I, you know, when I started writing, that's what everybody else told me I should write. And, um, you know, I was trying to fit in and learn the ropes and kind of find out who I was as a writer. And so I I did. I obeyed the rules and did what what was what everybody else was doing. But then. You know, and, and I would get reviews still that were, you know, oh, you know, this person can't write, she can't do this, she can't do that. And, you know, it would upset me and I'd get my feelings hurt. And, but then I started getting braver and kind of uh, getting comfortable in my writing skin. And so I started taking these little leaps and I was really surprised when people were there to jump with me. And so I got encouraged by my readers that they liked these kinds of books that I also like to read and now write. And so they kind of gave me the, you know, they were my little cheerleaders and kept me to, you know, want to write these things. So then when it, it just kind of grew from there and, and, and whenever I wrote the wild and it got like such a big social media thing, it was really hard to stay positive during that time. Just because, I mean, you, you can ignore reviews and stuff, but that's by staying off Goodreads or whatever, and you don't have to see the negative stuff. But when the negative stuff is like being thrown at you, it's a little bit harder to ignore it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it was a very like trying, stressful time for me. Mm-hmm. But I had like a very good support system. And the thing that really honestly kept me going is was my sales. Because <laughs> no matter <laughs> yes, because no matter what was being said about me publicly, like really hatefully or whatever my my what my sales just kept going cha-ching 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 so the readers were showing their support through their pocketbooks whether or not they actually went out there and defended me or whatever that that a lot of people don't want to do that i mean i personally am not that kind of person i stay quiet and i don't get into drama and stuff and so but they supported me through buying my book and so amazon banned it and the other retailers banned it so i put it on my website and to this day the wild's one of my best-selling books on my website and it just dings all day where people download 
and buy the books and the paperbacks too. So wow. it's, um, it, it kind of, when you're feeling down, it'd be one thing if, you know, the, the book got banned and you couldn't sell it, nobody wanted it, then you'd feel like, oh gosh, what did I do? Mm-hmm. But when your readers are constantly saying, I want more, I want more, I love that story, that's my first intro to you, that like, you know, are you going to write any more books like that? Like, when they're constantly coming at you with that, and then also buying the books, and buying the book for their friend, and buying the book for their grandma, you know, and you're just like, oh my gosh. And so, it like, the support is there. So, I've just kind of learned that, you know, maybe there are some people that speak loud or have a, a, a big platform to speak negative negatively about you, but it doesn't mean that everybody's everybody thinks like them because, you know, I would say 1% of the response I got from the wild was negative, and that was the loud percent that mm-hmm. everybody saw. But the other, you know, I had hu- huge authors messaging me saying, you've got this, you're, you know, you're, 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 you're doing amazing. We're so proud of you. You know, they don't want to go on their platform and do that. I get it because it's business and I don't do the, I don't do that either, but the support was there. It's just like hidden support. So it's easy to ignore those negative things when you have so much positive pouring in. And, you know, I got like an agent from it. it I mean, there's things that really positive things that happened through a very negative time. And um, so it, it doesn't feel so bad for me. Like it feels like a win, you know? So um, yeah. yeah. And I don't let it get me down because, and, and now going forward since that book, if I have negative response to a book or a negative re- review, I just think, Oh, Oh, well, you know, <laughs> because I, for every negative one, there's 10 more that are like, that was the best book I ever read. Mm-hmm. So I just, I just tune it out and, you know, just try not to think about it. So I love that. I love you. Like reframed, like think, yeah, there's certain reviews and certain people, but look at the, look at the pocket. <laughs> like, like, they're like, yes. there's still, bu- people are still buying and that is actually more concrete support. Right. Than, like, because right. they're like, they had to go to work mm-hmm. for some amount of time. Somebody had to earn that money and then they decided to spend it on you. <laughs> right. And they didn't just like have to go to another platform. Like they had to learn a new way to buy. Like they had to go to my yeah. website. They had to learn how to pay through PayPal. They had to learn how to d- download yes. it to their device. I mean, you're talking a huge learning curve that people were, they were there for it. Like it, it was mind boggling to me that they, you know, cause I'm, I'm like tech challenge. So for me, I was like, Oh my gosh, this is the worst day of my life. I don't know how to do this. But everybody else was they were very tech savvy and they were there for it. So I, you know, I'm not tech savvy, but I mean, I'm relatively tech savvy, but I read everything on my Kindle and I went mm-hmm. and you're the wild is the only thing I have in my iTunes. Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> or my yeah. iBooks. It's the only, uh-huh. like the only book yeah. I'm like, Oh, I want to go reread the wild. And I go and I open my, my books and it's easy to find. Cause it's the only thing right? there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because like so many people, you know, they just, I mean, they went and learned for this book. So it's just, I don't know. It just makes me proud. <laughs> yeah. And that kind of, um, well, you should be proud. You should be proud. Cause that's, uh, but I do understand why people aren't as vocal. Cause it's very, that's a very polarizing. It's like rhubarb. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Except yeah. like times a hundred. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Yeah>. like, <laughs> uh-huh. It's very polarizing kind of topic. And, yeah. Ooh. And not every, in drama. Yeah. I'm not a fan of drama either. So I see, I see, but that's so good. Oh, I love the indie author community. I really love right. it. Like generally. Right. They, they do. And, and they, they show up for it. And, and, you know, even though that time was like really dark and stressful for me and I like, I didn't let any of it go out on to social media. I just kind of kept it with me. And I had like my husband and my friends that were like, you know, you got this kind of pat me on the back every single day to keep me going. And, and then, you know, I turned around and I took all of those emotions that were boiling inside <laughs> of me and, and all the stuff that I had, um, had to deal with, like the, the negative mean people, you mm-hmm. know, I took all of those, um, emotions and I, I wrote a another book, you know, because <laughs> that's what we do. It's our therapy. And so I wrote the day she cried using the emotions from the wild. And I wrote a book about cyberbullying. Basically there's a, there's a huge theme of cyberbullying in there. And I let all those feelings pour out into that book. And a lot of people were just like, Oh my God, that's one of my favorite books. I cried so much, blah, blah, blah. So 
Oh my gosh. It's, it, it just kind of, you know, that's just, it's yeah. weird how we're inspired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Okay. I have another writing question before, okay. before I want to move over. Cause I am very curious about the having people buy books on your website, but I'm not, but I'm not going there yet because I really okay. I don't want to leave the writing topic. Okay. Okay. How do you write you're super like what like how do you make your scene so hot christy oh <laughs> gosh i don't know i've just got a really no. vivid imagination because <laughs> like for a lot of people i'm not saying it's myself maybe i don't know like <laughs> yeah like i'm like i get to the thing and then i'm like okay there's not it's that many words to use for women's private parts right yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm like, why aren't there that many words? And so many of them are like really like cheesy. scientific sounding or yeah. cheesy or right. and then I get stuck because I'm like, I get literally get stuck on like, what do I call this? Right, right, right. <laughs> like, right. Because I feel like there's there's like X rated, which I don't mind sometimes, right. but not every book calls for X rated right? Mm -hmm. or like you're going to medical school, medical school, but there's not like a very big in between. Right. <laughs> right. I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, I, I just, I get stumped on that. And then it may, and it takes away all the sexy, like whateverness that I'm trying to write because I'm stumped around just like the words to use. Well, so that's me. I mean, I'm not yeah. me, it's like somebody. Whatever. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> somebody whatever yeah but um so is there anything that you do to get yourself into like a really great spot or is it like you've already like what are well, i guess what's your process around that if you have one okay i'm gonna tell you right now writing the steamy scenes is the easiest part for me like i've fallen <sighs> asleep writing steamy scenes and woke up the next day and thought well dang that was hot <gasps> like i just like close my eyes almost and write them because it's just i don't know it's just it's, that is a simple thing for me because, well, and, and, and like you said, you get stuck on a word. Well, next time, just choose one word that you always use and stick it in there. And then later you can, after you've written the whole scene, you can go back in there and search for that one particular word and then maybe switch them out. And then you won't waste all that time agonizing uh, over that word. But, um, I mean, I just, I, I read a lot, like, like we said, and, yeah. um, and something, I, I read something the other day and it kind of, uh, hit home with me and it was from Quentin Tarantino and it was a qu uh, quote from him. And he said, because be before he ever was a screenwriter and director and all this, he worked at a video store and he was like the guru of all the books or all the movies. He'd watched them all. He knew everything about all of them. And so when people ask him, well, where do you get your ideas? He says, well, I just steal a little bit from every movie I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And so it, it makes sense because you're reading all these books and you're you're seeing things that you like in certain books so you're like oh i really loved when he got all growly and said all this you know during this moment and it was so possessive and so you kind of pull that in and, and keep that as one of your favorite things that you like in a, a steamy scene mm -hmm. or you know she you know whatever you know i liked this i liked that and you mm -hmm. kind of start building your own favorites in your head and it, and they become yours and it's your own style i suppose and so it's basically like quentin tarantino said i mean you just kind of learn as you, you read other things and it's it's definitely not stuff i pull from everyday life <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not <laughs> i would have i would have been so like yeah, jealous. that's a dream world. I'd yeah, have been so I'm jealous saying. if you're like, oh, you're like, I'm like, how do you get the steamy scenes? And you're like, oh, my husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, a funny story is one time I was trying to figure out a position, and I was like, oh, can you come over here and let's just we'll just act it out. And he looked at me and says, no. No. And walks off. And I was like, well, fine. I'll have to figure it out on my own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd have been so jealous. <laughs> I've been like, I'm like, uh, I am jealous of your writing ability on these. You're just like, I fall asleep. I'm like, just like I can do it with my eyes closed and all halfway asleep. Actually, that might be the best way to do it if I was right, halfway right. asleep because the critical voice kind of disappears. Right, right. Don't yeah. think about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I do love the growly possessive thing. So I'm going to have to. I like that. 
and it can mm-hmm. probably I I'm feeling encouraged. Yes, you should. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling encouraged. Like I can I can take little bits of things from other people and make them my own and and right. gradually over time it will really just become my own. Right, you're just you're just finding the things that you love in a story whether it be like the way he, you know, kind of, you know, nuzzles her hair or whatever or just like just little things like that that aren't that just are favorites in a love story even on movies and stuff the way they look at each other the way they talk to each other you just pay attention and mm-hmm. you start to know what you like as a reader and you keep keep that in your bank as for what you write yeah. so <sighs> okay <laughs> okay okay I, like part of me i know there's there's not really a good way to answer that question exactly but i i, mm-hmm. I keep i think hoping that somebody's going to be like oh well you just abc right <laughs> right right step it's, one it's more step of two, a, step three <laughs> right it's more of a like a, a it's more of a for me it's more of a, a feeling than a, a technical thing yeah so it's just i just get in the, the mental mood for it so yeah okay i like it I, that's 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 good that's good enough <laughs> i mean obviously it's working for you so yeah that's, i'll just get into the mental mood for it and do it Done. right yeah. don't have eyes over it <laughs> <laughs> okay so now i want to kind of oh, i want to kind of jump into a little bit of like marketing and stuff and mm-hmm. I, so i'm curious about the like, are all of your books, like, how many of your books, do you have your books in Kindle Unlimited or do you have them all? Or are they all wide? It's a mix. a mix. I have some in Kindle Unlimited and some wide. Um, just, it's just, it's just a mix across the board. <laughs> do you know, um, can you share like why some, not beyond the, beyond the one that have been banned, but well, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, are you saying like why I have some in yeah. Kindle Unlimited and some not? Um, well, for one, after that whole thing with the wild, I, I didn't completely like the idea of having all my eggs in one basket uh-huh. <laughs> because it, it made me very nervous because, you know, and especially you see people all the time that get their accounts taken away for no reason. And I, you know, I, I just, that kind of thing makes me really nervous. And so I'm, I'm what you would call like a doomsday prepper. So like in my life, I prepare for everything ahead of time. And so mentally, you know, whatever. And so, um, you, I just try to think ahead and think, okay, well, if, you know, if, is there any way that this could be seen as a problem? And if it is, am I limiting myself to just this one place? And, you know, I try to give myself options and, and to be quite honest, I feel like I make more money, um, going wide. Not that I sell tons on the other sites. I make almost 90 nine percent of that from amazon but just the fact that i'm not married to amazon Mm -hmm. helps me and then also i mean i I think because my books you know usually range from like the 230 to 280 range that's pages so they're not like super long 400 page books so when you're putting something in kindle unlimited and your book is you know 210 pages the pages read isn't very many Mm -hmm. So I I started thinking, well, maybe if I just do it wide and just get the sale, it it might do better for me. And so far, I mean, I've kind of been testing that out this year. And so far, wide has done better for me than Kindle Unlimited. But there are some that I still stick in Kindle Unlimited because of like maybe they're a part of a series or a set or something that's already that way. And I try to keep them streamlined. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. And how are people like, I have not done a whole lot of wide stuff because mostly I've been working with people who are pretty new. And I'm mm-hmm. like, when you're new, I think it's wise to be in Kindle Unlimited because it's like yeah. a, fewer barriers to people reading right. you and mm-hmm. and discovering you. Right. Better. You show up. <laughs> yeah. more, right. Exactly. Like, like, don't, don't put a barrier in between you and your first, you know, and your first <laughs> thousand <laughs> Right. Or whoever have a hundred fans. But right. um but so when you go like how is it all do you think it's already your reader base like you already have a reader base who are waiting for your books or are- You know, I I think so. I think a lot of it is because um and, and that that I have somebody who helps me with ads and she says all the time, you have a very loyal reader base that's just very organic, like 
whenever you say you're going to have a book out there, they go and buy it or pre-order it Mm -hmm. and it's all your people. And so, and, and so for me, like my struggle is my backlist. And so I'm like, Oh, new book, new book, new book. And I'm, I'm hitting all those readers that I have and they're the, they're the loyal ones that that keep buying. And so it's Mm kind of like, I mean, I don't know. I just, it's just, I I don't know. Yeah. I see. I see. So like, so you have almost a hundred books. That's a lot. (laughs) Mm-hmm. And your people who have read your books already love them, and so they buy every book that you put out. Mm-hmm. But you're not this, you're, you're you're telling me that you would like to somehow get new people right, <laughs> reading right, your right. backlist, right? And making more ready. money, <laughs> right? Right? But it's like I I don't I don't really know how to do that, so I just keep hustling it forward, doing what I know, which is you know, yeah giving my base what they want. So what yeah. well, they don't know they want. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you have like such different, like if you have like contemporary romance backlist and like mm-hmm. cyberbullying and yeah. like historical a, romance, a number of, yes. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's harder. Of that's harder. Yeah. 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 Because then you're, you're, you're basically my reader base is made up of a bunch of small groups of people. Mm -hmm. so like i've got the people that love the really taboo books but they you know don't care nothing about rom-com and Mm -hmm. i've got my rom-com lovers who love my rom-coms but wouldn't touch my dark romance with the 10-foot pole Mm -hmm. so and then i've got my dark romance readers who are actually the most Mm well-rounded that will read almost all of it and so you just and like your you know, a lot of times like maybe your alien readers will also read dark romance or mm-hmm. your your taboo readers will also read dark romance. So it's kind of like some of those blend together. And mm-hmm. mafia would read you know taboo or so some of those do kind of intersect and you have the same people, but it's a lot of small groups of people. So like every time I write a book, I don't think oh I'm going to try to market to all twenty six thousand people that follow me on Facebook because I know that you know not everybody's gonna like reverse harem so yeah you know what i'm saying so i just think these this is for the reverse harem readers or when i wrote the free which is a follow-up for the wild i think this is for all the the, the dark taboo you know readers yeah so i i don't think it's for everybody i never go into it thinking it's for everybody so i don't have these like really high expectations okay yeah oh <laughs> how <laughs> wait wait how many but bo- how many books do you release in a year now ish uh, last year I did like 28, I think. And the year before I did like 18. Oh my um, gosh. Okay. <laughs> but you know, you gotta think some of those are co-writes, which yeah. believe it or not, are, are, they're still hard because you're trying to blend two voices into one book. Um, and then when you're doing it with several different people, you're really changing the way you do things for each person because everybody's different. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it's, there's, and some of them will be, you know, a shorter book and some of them be a, a big long humdinger and some of them be a part of a series. So it's just kind of like variety. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would like to, <laughs> are you willing to talk about, oh, I just want to, I'm like, I have, I have notes here and before, like, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on the conversation. I'm really loving what we're talking about, but I also like want to stop and be like, Hey, everybody, she does have a book called pause to prolific that she hasn't mentioned right. because she's very humble and like she's not <laughs> mentioned it yet i've read it three times in the last couple of weeks because i keep on being oh like God. i need to refresh myself for before this interview oh <laughs> and then i'm like which squirrel is it i don't know <laughs> i can't remember the squirrel but it's a really nice little thing about how to write faster which is why which is part of the topic that we're talking about right now okay <laughs> Pause to prolific 28 books last year some of them co-written but it's still a heck of a lot of writing and it's very enjoyable and gives you kind of some insight into how k webster keeps on getting so much done but obviously i can you can hear and this wasn't in the the book that's like she loves what she's doing there's definitely like a love squirrel <laughs> right yes yes <laughs> <laughs> definitely <laughs> behind all the squirrels the mama squirrel is the, the right right and she you'll get the, books. yeah you'll get the squirrel reference if you read the book okay okay yeah. um, do you mind if i ask you a little bit about co-writing sure hey okay, what um oh gosh so many questions okay <laughs> why do you co-write 
Okay. First question. Why do yep. I quit writing? Um, yeah. Because I think that writing is a very lonely job. Mm. And I came from a profession where I worked with lots of people mm. and um, went to lunch with my friends all the time and was used to talking to people all day. And while social media brings you that, there's there's a different kind of thing with working on a project with somebody. It's just mm. kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And so I strictly do it for fun to do something different and to do something with my friends. Next question. How did you meet your friends? How did you meet these other authors? Well, um, okay, so for one, uh, Kira Duki, she and I wrote the Pretty Stolen Doll series and a bunch of other books. And mm -hmm. she's a dark, a dark romance author. And there was actually a dark romance group. And every time they would have these things like, who would you pair up to write a, a dark romance? Oh. And everybody kept putting us together. And so I always tease that we're an arranged marriage that... <laughs> and then we fell, and then we fell in love, and so um, they. She reached out to me and said, "You know, people keep tagging us. Is this something you want to like try?" And I was like, "Sure." And as soon as we started discussing storylines, it it was like talking to the other half of my brain, and it was just spooky how like how we thought like so in line with each other, and it just it was fun. Whoa. <laughs> 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 so you're like we need to do that just because it's fun right yeah we had a, a really good time and i mean we had to learn a lot of things along the way about how to blend voices and 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 learn how to work together but it, you know like now care i talked to her almost every day and it's a lot like several times a week on the phone and she's like a sister to me so i mean we went from we literally went from strangers to sisters yeah. What kind of, uh, I've asked a few people who co-write this because I'm always curious about like how people do it. Like some people, one where it's an outline, that's usually like when you have a really successful author bringing in another newbie author. But some mm -hmm. people are just like one chapter each. Some people are, you know, there's a number of different ways. I'm curious about how do, and it's probably, maybe it's different for each one, but what, which ones do you do? Or which one's your favorite? Not the um, authors, the styles of the right. co-writing. Well, since me and Care started first, the way we did it was we, um, she and I just write till we got tired because she's in the UK and it's really hard to stay on the same schedule. Okay. So where she could write all through the evening, her evening, I'm, it's the middle of my day and I'm, I'm doing stuff, you know? And so it was easier to let her write until she went to bed and then passed it back to me. And so that might be three chapters or whatever. And so we, that's how our style was for the longest time. And then we did another little series that we did. We just did back and forth chapters. And that's typically how I do it with my other code writers. We each take a point of view mm. and I usually take the, the guy's point of view. Cause I really like writing the, the male point of view. And mm -hmm. so, and then we just take turns. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And, and, and it takes a lot of, um, you know, like we talk about what's going to happen and then that person goes and writes the chapter and then they come back and you read it. And then you talk about again, how, Oh, what I liked about this chapter, what I think we should change about this chapter and what do we do in the next chapter? Okay. That was the other part I was going to ask about is the organization. Cause mm -hmm. it, cause you, I would imagine it's harder to to lean towards pantsing when you're right. co-writing. <laughs> right. You definitely have to have like short-term outlining. And and some of I have some co-writers who are extensive outliners, like um Nikki Ash. She wrote Heath with me and then the Stolen Lies and Hidden Truths uh duet. And she's English teacher, so she's got that like way about her where she's a super outliner and um, it, it's a lot of times we're both like, oh my gosh, because I'm not an outliner. And so we kind of have to let each person take their strengths and the other person, you know, like where she's going to do the outlining and I just let her outline it. And then I give her feedback and she adjusts it and tweaks it and updates it and all that. Mm. And so it's, it, it's just, it's, you know, you just, like I said, it, every personality is a little different and you kind of have to. Yeah. Yeah, I just, just I just finished. Actually, today is a release day for me. Okay, happy release <laughs> <laughs> for my third story. <laughs> yeah. Yay! But I but I have a friend, and so we were doing a series. So we didn't co-write the stories, to, like each story, but we each took two in the series. Mm -hmm. And but we've been we've been writing the we write the blurbs together, and we also kind of we've also been alpha reading each other's. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> 
<laughs> but it's turned into kind of a because it's a series we have everything on the same street so i'm put including right. her characters and mine so there's a little bit of like okay mm -hmm. what's the timeline on yours what's the right. da -da -da? and it's it's fun because as we've done it we've realized that like i'm really good with like really cheesy romance uh -huh. storylines <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and she's really good with like the structure like you're supposed to have this this because she has mm -hmm. a background in um editing mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. and <laughs> went to school for english and i just am a big reader and so it's right. interesting to see like both and when we both work together our strengths are make for a really like i was before we had our interview i was reading my story because it just came out today and i was like i want to read it <laughs> <laughs> right, because yeah. I'm a dork. <laughs> uh -huh, no, I do the same thing. <laughs> Reading my, I'm like, and I, I got like halfway through, and I'm like, this is so good. Yes, yes, this is I so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope my next one can be as good. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm a real writer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So, can you tell us? <clears throat> oh my gosh, gosh, you just said like. Can I tell you, but I appreciate you right now, Christy. Is she's like, yeah, I just kind of do it, and it's and it's working. People like it. <laughs> <laughs> I just very go with the flow. <laughs> yeah, but I'm gonna acknowledge there's a lot of uh, bravery and courage in putting out the stories that you put out, and then being like, well, people like them, and working through right. whatever the backlash is gonna be. Uh huh. Like I just, I will. <laughs> I yeah. have a, a I have a rebellious streak. My mom always said that I am stubborn to a fault. So if people say that you can't write those things, well, by God, I'm going to write them because I can write those things because I don't see why I can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you tell me I can't do something nine times out of 10, I'm going to try to figure out a way to do it and show you that I can do it, you know, in a very polite, professional way. <laughs> I I love that because I was I was actually a really goody two shoes growing up. Like I, if, if circumstances required me to be almost. But then I got mm -hmm. older and I put a post it note on my computer. At some point, mm -hmm. I put a post it note on my computer that said, "No, you can't," because right. every time I read it, I was like, "Yes, I can." <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas earlier in my life, if I'd had that post it note, I would have been like, "You're right, I can't." Right. And now I'm like, "Nah." -uh. <laughs> Yes, I yeah, can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you got to you got to kind of like outsmart yourself. <laughs> mhm. Mm I have a question that I've had in my mind that I keep forgetting, but now I'm going to ask again. What what do you think and I you might not even be able to answer cuz it's like asking you about not you, but I'm asking you like what do you think appeals why do you think your readers like what you write so much? Like especially the dark romance or the taboo. Like what is it have, has anybody communicated with you or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the okay. time. They they just say that, you know, they feel like it. they can connect to the story in some way, um, that it's not all perfect and rainbows and butterflies, that they, you know, it, it, it's just people like to be challenged mm. emotionally and they... And the readers are the same way. If you tell them they can't read the wild, guess what? They're going to read it because they can. So they do like to be challenged. They, you know, I've had people, you know, because a lot of people say, well, people with any kind of triggers or bad history in their life can't read those types of books. But I absolutely disagree because a huge, huge, huge portion of my readers are people that have gone through terrible, terrible things in their life. And they don't want to read about the really super, you know, happy, easy stories because that's not how their life was. Mm -hmm. And they feel connection to characters that are messing up big time and are, you know, breaking social rules or actual laws or things like that. Because, you know, you don't realize how many people have dealt with things that are in these books that you think, oh, that would never happen in a million years. Oh my gosh. Well, guess what? People have messaged me. These stories, all of the stories I've written, there are people that directly relate to these stories and have been these characters in these books. So even whereas we read it for entertainment and that's interesting and we wouldn't agree with these things in real life, there are people in real life 
with these issues Mm -hmm. and with these stories. And I've had people tell me, thank you for telling my story. And Mm -hmm. so they, you you just, you know, people, they just connect to them uh, in a, like a, an emotional way that in any, you you don't even, it's not even to say that everybody that's had terrible, bad things happen to them are, are the only ones that like those stories because lots of people that, had have had a perfect life enjoy these stories because it's just something different and outside the norm and something to get their heart pumping you know yeah. plus you're an excellent writer <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> like it, like all of this is within the framework of you being an excellent writer because it doesn't matter how good a storyline you have if the per- <laughs> the writer can't yeah. make you like if you can't connect with the person because the writing is good mm-hmm. you know like that's and i'm saying that as somebody who's trying to become a decent writer and i'm like okay like the hardest part is like in, in my head i'm like it's easy yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> in my head emotionally connecting to the characters is so easy <laughs> but how do i, I make that, it yeah i think i think the thing is is i absolutely love all of my characters even the bad ones like i love them i love all of their flaws 100 percent, and i don't judge any of them so when i write I write with that feeling. So I don't write in there going, oh gosh, God, can you believe this guy? If he was in real life, he would be going to jail and this and that. No, I don't write it like that. I write it as this character who has been dragged through the mud and his life has gotten to this point because of X, Y, and Z. And my heart hurts for him because I know how he thinks and what his heart feels like. And I let that bleed out. And so you guys feel it too when you're reading it. And so you're right there with me. Like you, you feel for this character the same way. And a lot of times people get mad because they don't want to feel for the character because they want to see him as a villain and they're mad because that shouldn't have been hot, (laughs) but, (laughs) but it, it was, and now they're mad about it. And that's like, well, I'm sorry, but you, you fell in love with the character too. And even though he was messing up and doing these terrible things, you still, cared about him Mm -hmm. and that's real that's real human nature because if you really just put everybody out in their own little categories based on what they've messed up in life you wouldn't have anybody that you loved or cared about because everybody's like messed up and done things in their life that aren't okay and so i mean it's just people can relate to that and nobody is perfect no matter what they say or think oh my gosh amen sister (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> amen to that in fact like i didn't i was just i was like where and i because i just said it you know i read the first three of war and peace this mm-hmm. last weekend because i was like i'm interviewing her i need to read I, yeah. I went and i searched like what is the top rated and then i was like oh she wrote this a little while ago it's got all five stars people love it yada yada and then the second one spoiler alert people so if you haven't read it and you're planning on skip this sec this minute, but like the boyfriend, the uh, the boyfriend who I can't remember his name at the moment, uh huh. Because I Brandon? just and, yes, Brandon. Thank you. Oh my gosh, you know all your characters. Oh, but, well, so I, I'm good. surprised. That was a guess. <laughs> okay, yeah, Brandon. Oh, God. I'm like wow, because I don't. I'm like she really does love them. She has them all in her head. I was like the boyfriend, and she's like Brandon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because I cried. I cried at the end of that mm-hmm. scene yeah. that I'm not going to, but I was like, oh, even though he'd been like a total right. jerk yeah. face. Uh-huh. The last, and I was like, oh, he's twisted and he's broken. Guess what? I cried too when I write those. And I was like, but because you did a really good job of like, when she sees, she's like, he, he, he's not who he used to be. Right. But I can right. still see it in him. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the kind mm-hmm. of thing that gets me every time that particular kind of thing and if you if you look at any villain and you you see those villain origin stories it's like they all started out as just someone wanting to be loved Mm -hmm. and a place in life and life kicked them and beat them down and it molded and changed who they were and it doesn't mean that at the very heart of who they are they're just rotten to the core not every not everybody is 100 percent rotten I don't. That's the way it is. I don't think. I don't think it. I I actually, over time, like since I've been grown up, and personally, Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of soul searching, and I don't think that anybody is. No. I really don't think anybody is. I'm like everybody's, 
living within a set of circumstances and we don't know everybody's context. We don't know everybody's history. Did they, did they have to make certain choices along the way and one right. choice and another choice versus another choice kind of took them down that path? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> like absolutely. It shapes who they are. And yes. Some yeah. People, it shapes them more negatively, but it doesn't, you know, and, and I think that's, what's fun about writing these characters is that, even when they're 90% villain, there's still that 10% hero that's inside of them, you mm. know? Oh my gosh. So great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I, I really, I think that falling in love with the characters, I'm going to tell you, I think that's, it makes me want to do that with mine. Like I'm really mm-hmm. inspired by that. And I think that that's probably why the quality of your writing and your stories are so good because you, you fall in love with the characters and it, it shows well, and I think what you have to do when you're when you're thinking up your characters and everything is you have to think about them as a real person and you think about all of their oddities and just every little quirk about them and their emotions and their behavior and everything. And then you think this character is so real and so vivid in my mind that I could put them in any story. I could take this character and put them in the wild or, you know, this is war baby or whatever and they're going to stand out because they are the story the characters are the story and so if you go in with that like kind of mindset that and and have like this great love for your character and less about the actual story itself the story will weave around the characters mm-hmm. if that makes sense. yeah so, and that's what makes them more like interesting i think oh my gosh that's so good because i've been trying to write this I'm trying to write this next story and I've been kind of stuck. And I think it's because I need to spend a little time falling in love with the characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Give them some personality. (laughs) Yeah. And it'll be so much easier. Yeah. Oh, so good. Okay. Okay. What is your best advice for people who, because the people who are listening want to be successful authors. Mm -hmm. So what's your best advice for that? Um, Okay. For me, it's, and it's kind of how it is with pause to prolific. It's just ig- ignoring all of the chatter around you and all of the distractions and all of everything and just staying focused on your writing. Don't even think about all the stuff that comes with being an author. It's just focus on what you started out in this to begin with is you wanted to tell a story. So focus on that 100%. And then, then give your time accordingly to these other things. But then your story is just like the the primary thing. It gets all of the attention and all of the love and all of the energy. And then once that's complete, then you can go and do all the other things involved because those other things can be energy sucking and stressful and discouraging. And next thing you know, if you're right in the middle of what you're trying to do, write a story, and then you get bogged down by all these things around you, your story starts to slow down. It maybe stops. You start to lose your love for it because it's not that you're losing the love for writing. It's that you're losing the love because of everything else around you that's distracting you. And Mm. so if you can just, you know, like all the time people say, well, I want to be an author. And I say, well, go write a book. And they're like, well, but what do you do here? And what do you do that? How do I market myself? And I'm like, well, you are like 10 steps ahead of yourself. Like, write your book, write your book, (laughs) write the story. That is the most important thing. And when you finish and you type the end, then come back to me and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. (laughs) So, it, you know, and, and so many people just get so sucked into the marketing and becoming a social media presence and you know, networking and, you know, get lining up editors and getting a cover and all these things. And you're like, what about your book? Yeah, I know a handful of people, and I'm sure there's many, many more that have at least like a dozen covers, mm-hmm. and and have not finished, <laughs> right. right? Or at least not published. I think maybe they have one finished on their computer, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe not, but maybe, but uh, but but they have all the covers, and they have right. all that. You know, I'm like, and I think they just. Back. <laughs> yeah, they just fall victim to the the process and you don't have to if you just I mean and and you're not writing if you're out there doing all these other things and I mean mm-hmm. the the book is what that's what you're going to make your money off of eventually so why are you spending all this time on things that don't directly you know yeah. attribute to your income whereas the right writing is attributing to your income. Ooh. 
Getting a book cover would be an excellent... Oh, wait, you said reward yourself with writing. And I love yeah. that. But I also, I might add in, like, once you finish your book, then you can buy another book cover. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's an incentive. That's one of those, like, mind tricks that you do to yourself mm -hmm. to get yourself motivated. Because book covers are, you're like, ooh, that's so pretty. <laughs> right. It is. It's distracting. Yeah. Very distracting. Okay. So you mentioned, like, very, very subtly... Um, you reverse harem. Now, have you written reverse harem before? I have written it once before with Kara Dukey, okay. and it, it it was called Share Me, and we did that together. It was our first stab at uh, yeah. reverse. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to ask, what is your latest book, and where people can find you? And I I have you guys. I have an in, an insight. I knew a little bit ahead, but can you tell us <laughs> about the story a little bit? Sure. Um, my next book that's coming out is February 24th, so it's just right around the corner, mm -hmm. and it's called Delinquent Demons, and it is reverse harem um, for demons. So it's paranormal romance. I um, don't have tons of those, but like I always like a challenge, and so it's part of a collection where there's lots of authors writing in this prison. It's a it's a prison like theme i guess mm -hmm. and so my characters all meet in this prison and um so it, they you know they, they said you want to write in this it's paranormal romance and i was like well sure you know like I, i'm always up for trying something a little bit different and so they didn't tell me to write reverse harem i just decided to and as soon as and i had had this other story just sitting in my head for a while that was kind of like just bare bones that I wanted to do something with. And so I was able to kind of manipulate that, that story in my head to fit what I wanted to do for this set. And so now it's just, it's turned out pretty awesome. So I love reverse harem. <clears throat> I do. It's, it's one of my favorite genres. <clears throat> I just, I'm like, yeah, why not? Right. Like I started reading Laurel K. Hamilton way back. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> like very uh -huh. long time ago and it wasn't called reverse Bar harem back then it was just laurel k hamilton <laughs> right yeah <laughs> it was just naughty <laughs> yes it was just naughty and i've loved it since mm -hmm. and now i'm like now when i read books i'm like that should have been a reverse like look at right. what's what's the right. point of a love triangle just right. take two <laughs> yeah just have them all i mean come on now <laughs> they all love you you love them what's yes, the problem yes yes <laughs> <laughs> which i think is so fun but i'm curious um would you say that delinquent demons is like paranormal romance leaning towards dark leaning towards like d does it have a lean it's um it's funny oh. it's it's surprisingly funny and i did not go in, go into this wanting to make it funny but the heroine is hilarious she her inner thoughts or what we're thinking, you know, like, oh, my gosh. And she, you know, about, you know, oh, my gosh, I've got f basically four boyfriends. You know, what a hussy, yeah. you know, what a hussy and all this. And so she's just thinking up all these things that we're kind of thinking. And she says the funniest stuff. And and so I didn't expect her to be funny going into the story. So at first I kind of was like, oh, my gosh, what is she doing? And then I was like, nope, I'm going to let her be funny. I'm going to let her say her things because it's, it's good. Because the overall storyline is kind of not dark it's more like um epic and mm -hmm. um intrigue and you're trying to find out these answers and you know there's a lot of paranormal things like they've got special powers and stuff and they're really cool and you know they're 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 trying to get away from the bad guys type situation yeah. so you you've got that villainous aspect that's kind of looming over them but um and then you've got the uh comedy that kind of just pokes in there. It's not like a rom-com, but she's just funny. And she says funny stuff the whole time. And so it kind of just gives a little bit of comedic relief. So. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. Okay. I cannot wait to read it. I cannot wait to read it. And that's my mom's <laughs> birthday. So, oh. <laughs> so happy birthday, mom. I'm buying happy myself birthday. a book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a naughty one. <laughs> a naughty one. Yeah. She knows that. <laughs> Yeah, she knows you by now. <laughs> she knows me by now. She said, like, I think I think I realized how much, like, naughty 
romance is part of my brand, which I mm -hmm. or identity when my mom started buying me like summer sausages and putting them in my stocking every Christmas. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's like, Your sausage, since you've been single for a while. Here's your Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then each year they got progressively bigger and bigger. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And okay. Uh, enough about me and my summer sausages. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Numerous summer sausages. Um what <laughs> Where's the best place for people to find you and to be able to access all of your stuff? Um, obviously, I've got most of my stuff out on Amazon and mm -hmm. Barnes and Noble and Kobo and iBooks. Um, uh, there's also another platform called Eden Books, and they kind of take some of they they take all kinds of books that are romance, but they also take books like mine that aren't allowed on Amazon. And then um, I also sell on my website and. A lot of times people know if they're looking for a particular book of mine and they can't find it on Amazon, go to my website. It's there. Okay. And so, the website is? www.authorkwebster.com. Authorkwebster.com. Yep. Just the way it sounds, too. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. <laughs> when you said yes, I, there was definitely some squeeing happening. So. Well, I was totally nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did wonderfully. And so I want to thank you for being here. And then I'm going to thank everybody who's listening. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hugs and happy authoring here at Author Like a Boss. If you love the Author Like a Boss podcast, we'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give a review on iTunes. Until next time.